Well, good morning. This is Plant Smart Living with Farmer Fred. Really glad you could join me today. It's a nice day here in Pennsylvania. It's nice and overcast, and you know, it's really nice having these overcast rainy days for those tiny seedlings in our garden. But anyhow, I wanted to share with you some tips and ideas on how you can direct sow butternut squash in your vegetable garden. So I'm really glad you could join me today. So before we get started planting the seeds, I just wanted to give you some idea and perspective on where I'm going to be planting these uh, seeds in the garden. Um, you know, these upper gardens, I have my red beets in there and, and some snow peas and my kale and everything. But these are vining plants, you know, and they vine out about 8 to 10 feet or, or more. Uh, and so those upper beds, I have about 4 foot in between the row. But these center beds here, I designed specifically so I could plant my, uh, I'm going to be planting my butternut squash here and some of my cantaloupe and some of my, some of my watermelons in these beds. But right where you see the watering can there is where I'm going to be direct sowing these butternut squash seeds in the garden. So before we get planting these seeds, let's just talk about soil temperature conditions for vegetable seed germination. If you've been watching some of my videos, you'll see that I have spoken about this seed germination chart and again it's very helpful it gives us some ideas about when we can direct seed or direct sow plants out in our vegetable garden well, anyhow here here on the list it talks about this you know the butternut squash is a winter squash and it talks about it says here the minimum soil temperature should be 60 degrees and optimum is 70 to 95 you know, here it talks about also peppers or pumpkins or 60 degree soil temperature. And so what you want to do is, you know, get your, this is a, a meat thermometer and so you can just use this out in your garden. And right now the soil temperature here is about 59 to 60 degrees. And so uh, what I'm going to do is be direct sowing these, but I'm also going to then put one of these I call these my mini greenhouse. These are empty salad containers. So once I direct sow these seeds in the garden, I'm going to put the, the, the mini greenhouse over the seeds to help warm the soil up and protect the, the, the small plant or tiny plant from any kind of frost. So, so anyhow, yeah, you want to make sure your, your soil temperature is uh, just the right condition for direct sowing out in your garden. So what I'm going to do next is uh, I'm going to start preparing the soil for these for these uh, winter squash. So what I'm going to do is I, I have my alfalfa pellets. If you've seen me, my other videos, I like to use these as a, a nice uh, organic fertilizer in the garden. They have an NPK of 322. So I'm simply just going to spread these out in this area here where I'm going to be sowing these seeds. Now I also put an application of these alfalfa pellets about a month and a half ago. That way they've already been started breaking down in the soil. And so these, this application is probably going to last me most of the summer. And uh, so, so what I generally like to do is I get my garden fork here and work it through the soil back and forth where you're going to be planting your seeds. You want your soil to be nice and loose and nice and fertile. You want to be able to feed the soil. So just work it back and forth. And these forks are about 12 inches long. So, you know, this way your roots will spread out real nice. And then you can just take the back end of your fork and then just slightly even it out just like that and so so what I'm going to be doing here is planting these these bed this bed here is four foot by eight foot I'm going to be planting them right in the middle here back about about 18 inches now this one particular four foot by 32 foot bed here 
I have the, the row here is spaced eight feet apart here and eight foot eight to ten feet on the other side so there's plenty of room for those vines to spread out here and this gets full sun you want to make sure you know your melons and peppers and tomatoes they like full sun you know more the better and they also like nice warm soil temperatures and so uh, so what I'm simply going to do is just take out the I'm going to plant about five of these butternut uh, squash seeds and uh, you know here it, it tells you it always gives you some helpful ha and handy information here on the packs here they give you it tells you a planting depth of half inch and I'll probably go about an inch deep here though uh, and then thin to about five foot apart and then full sun and maturity is about a hundred days for these and then tells you to sow after danger of frost but being I'm going to be using my mini greenhouse here it's going to protect the uh, the new plants uh, it's right in the beginning of May here now our frost date here is May 15th so these will probably take about five to seven days for them to germinate before they start popping their heads out of the soil so I'm just simply going to take a few of these out of the pack here and out of these five plants I'll probably pick one or two plants that'll that'll uh, I'll keep as a as a keeper so I'm just simply going to just stick my finger in the soil and make a straight row and then just drop a seed in about an inch deep and then you'll certainly want to then just simply push the soil back and what I'm going to do is just take a rock and I'm going to put a rock right on each end of where I planted these seeds so it'll give me some idea on where to water and then you're simply just going to take your watering can and water them in real nice you want to make sure that your seeds don't germ, uh, don't dry out whatever seed you sow whether they're indoor seeds down in your house or outdoor in your garden you always want to keep your seed bed nice and moist so then what I'm going to do is just take this little container here and place it over the where I planted those seeds and then I'm just going to take one big rock and put it right over where the label is and so that's going to keep out any birds it'll warm the soil up, soil with temperature up nice and uh, just looking forward to having butternut squash here in our vegetable garden uh, let's just read a minute here on what it says about the this is a Waltham butternut it is one of the most popular squash the very uniform fruits are eight to ten inches with thick cylindrical necks and a very small seed cavity <coughs> the skin is a creamy tan the yellow orange flesh is sweet and nutty in flavor it stores well and a heavy yielding plant and says to allow to remain on the vine until mature and then the skin will hard and so uh, in fact I still have a few squash in my garage that I stored over the winter and so you know winter squash is a great uh, food storage uh, plant and so also you can I'm going to be also planting like acorn squash or the uh, uh, different squashes the um, the big squash the blue hubbard squash I'm also going to be planting sometime in the next couple days so anyhow uh, this is about as simple as it gets to direct sow in your garden really nothing difficult about it and um, once these plants start getting a little bit larger too I have some wire fencing that I'll put some uh, that are about four foot by four foot maybe a little bit larger I'm going to stick over these young plants to protect them from the deer that's what I do with all my plants here uh, until they get mature is I put some little wire fencing uh, over over my small plants and so so anyhow I hope this video has been helpful for you if you have any questions or comments feel free to leave them in the section below so I just hope you have a great day so until next time this is plant smart living with farmer Fred